Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about the Darkover series. Darkover is a series of novels. It is not a video game or a Japanese cartoon, simply novels. It can best be classified as science fantasy. Some novels are science fiction in the case of space travel, where others contain swords and sorcery, wizards. Darkover is the synthesis of science fiction and fantasy in that sense, but it's across an entire series. And that series begins with Landfall, written by Marion Zimmer Bradley. She wrote the series out of order, that is to say, she wrote Landfall first, and then she'd go on to write stuff in the future of Darkover, the world. But then later, as her health started to fail, Deborah J. Ross took over the writing for her. And since then, all the other books in Darkover have been credited to Marion Zimmer Bradley, Deborah J. Ross. Now, I have a lot of trouble recommending the first book in the series, Darkover Landfall, just because I didn't enjoy the ending of it very much. And I realize why I didn't enjoy the ending. It wasn't satisfying. The characters made a few leaps of logic that didn't make sense to me. And in general, I was unsettled by certain characters' willingness to settle for immediate happiness over their long-term goals. But I understand why the novel went in the direction it did, and that is because it is the precursor to the rest of the series. Dark Over Landfall takes place in the distant, distant future, where humanity has colonized the stars. And while they have found other life forms out in space, they haven't found anything that rivals humanity. That is to say, the four intelligent species that they have found weren't tool users. And as a result, humanity simply dominated because a tool-using race is superior in every way. That setup leads us into Landfall itself, where this colony ship experiences a technical failure and drops out of faster-than-light travel, smashing onto a unknown world. The ship is totaled, and they have to struggle to survive. A division is created between the colonists, who wanted to create a new utopia, versus the spaceship crew, the men and women who actually serviced the ship. They wanted to get home desperately. They weren't looking to spend their entire lives on a colony. And so that division sparked conflict. And eventually the computer containing the mass of humanity's accumulated knowledge is destroyed. This would have been their only way home. And as a result, they have to settle for life on this mysterious new world. And the pollen messes with people's senses. It drives people insane, it causes them to do things that are completely irrational. But in doing so, people begin to expand their consciousness. And that expansion of consciousness is what the series leads into. Again, I don't really recommend jumping into the series at this point. I would instead recommend jumping in at the Clingfire Trilogy, which I will get to shortly. But first, let's talk about Storm Queen. Chronologically speaking, Storm Queen is the second novel in the Dark Over series. It takes place during an era filled with chaos, after the descendants of the various families had populated the land. This expansion of consciousness had actually given way to the development of psychic powers, and the manipulation of fundamental energies resulted in the creation of spellcraft. In the case of Storm Queen, this is all about the results of a selective breeding program. If anyone is familiar with the Dune franchise, you might remember this in the form of the Bene Gesserit line. This parallels it in some ways, but it is significantly different. Either way, I wouldn't recommend picking up the series here either. Instead, I would go forward one book to The Fall of Niskaya. The Fall of Niskaya is the first book in the Klingfire trilogy which takes place during the era of the Hundred Kingdoms. This is where I recommend that people introduce themselves with the series. This is not science fiction, it is fantasy. They will very often talk about what is known as a Lauren Matrix, which is a form of spellcasting. 
Lauren is the mana or magical energy that they're able to generate and it flows through everyone's bodies. It is the fundamental force that they're able to manipulate. This is the realm of wizards and it explains how this expanded consciousness that's touched on in the earlier novels is actually put to use. As you get to see through the main character, Corin's eyes. The various kingdoms are kept in a social order by something known as a truth spell, where the leaders of each kingdom would come together for a very large meeting. They would determine what justice needs to be done in between the various kingdoms. And nobody can lie at these particular meetings due to the advent of something known as a truth spell. However, it's revealed that the villain's bloodline allows him to lie under a truth spell, which threatens the very foundation of this entire world society. In general, there's multiple plot threads going because it's about the main character's relationship with a noblewoman, about the main character developing as a mage, and also, again, about this villain who is able to lie under a truth spell. It throws a ton of things into the mix but ultimately, it's just the precursor to Varzal's story. Varzal is the main character of the second book in the Klingfire trilogy, known as Zandru's Forge. Varzal would be known in later books in the franchise as Varzal the Good, and established many of the tenets that their society would follow in the future. He's actually a pivotal figure in the world's lore, and this is a novel that was written later to explain his origins. Because, again, this series was written out of order, but it is best experienced in this order so that later when people start referencing him, you know who he is. It deals with the aftermath from Fall of Niskaya, and also with the heir to the villain's bloodline from Fall of Niskaya and how there's a complicated and twisted relationship between Varzal, his best friend, and this heir I spoke of. It's a tale of revenge, but it's also the establishment of Varzal's character. And again, much like Fall of Niskaya, it is about him developing as a wizard. The last book in the Klingfire trilogy, A Flame and Holly, deals with the weapons of mass destruction known as Klingfire, which had been looming over everyone in the first two novels. The main character isn't Varzal himself, although it does feature Varzal. It is Varzal's sister and her trials and tribulations. In general, in the Klingfire trilogy, it feels kind of odd having Fall of Niskaya being a detached part of the Klingfire trilogy a precursor as it were, but it establishes the world well and explains the tale of revenge that plays out in this particular section of the franchise. This trilogy establishes the compact, which is why the use of magical or Larian weapons aren't used in future installments nearly to the extent they are in the Klingfire trilogy. Varzal's story would continue in Two to Conquer, which was actually written long before the Klingfire trilogy, and the after effects would be seen in the heirs of Hammerfell. There are many other books that lead up into this timeline. However, the series returns to its science fiction roots in Rediscovery, which is the beginning of an era in the novels known as Against the Terrans. You see, in the original novel, Landfall, Everyone were Terrans. They identified as people originating from Earth or from one of Earth's colonies. Ultimately, they had a galactic culture that was already established. But thousands of years on this world has generated a society that runs on completely different principles. It ultimately accumulates in the people of Darkover, a planet that has psychic powers, Lauren weapons, wizards, and at this point, technology. And it pits them against 
an alien force. Those aliens are humans from Earth. The series goes on from there and continues to be science fiction, but because it has these fantastical elements in it, it is ultimately science fantasy. I recommend checking out the series and I recommend anyone looking to get started with it, check out Fall of Niskaya. Because I'm going to be doing a video related to other things, I decided I wanted to cover this series independently of that other topic and just do a little review. That's what I did here. This series is one of my favorites and I do recommend checking it out. And when I do eventually post that related unrelated video, I will have it in the video description here. Either way, thank you all for watching. Check the links for more content and I will see y'all next time.